Hello and welcome to Health Professional Radio. I'm your host, Neil Howard. Thank you so much for joining us for another segment. In this segment, we're going to be speaking with Dr. Bruce Bender. He's lead researcher and co-director of the Center for Health Promotion at National Jewish Health. He's joining us here on the program to discuss some recent research that was published in the Journal of Allergy and Clinical Immunology in practice about the Asthma Toolkit Boot Camp. Welcome to Health Professional Radio. Dr. Bender, thank you so much for joining us this morning. Good morning, and thank you. Well, give us a bit of your professional background, if you would. Sure. So I'm a professor of pediatrics and psychiatry at National Jewish Health and the University of Colorado School of Medicine. Uh, The Center for Health Promotion, which we created about 15 years ago, aims to create programs and then study them through research Programs to improve the lives and health and health of people, including changing people's health-related behavior. We're going to talk about this boot camp, this asthma toolkit boot camp. Why was this boot camp program needed? So the, we created this program uh, over a decade ago because it's intended to train primary care physicians in rural areas how to take care of people with asthma, particularly kids with asthma. So nationally, there's about 6 million patients with asthma living in rural settings. Many of them have some difficulty or have to travel long distances to get health care. And specialty health care for asthma is particularly difficult to obtain. That would mean seeing an allergist or seeing a pulmonologist, which typically aren't there in local rural settings. Mm -hmm. And so the whole idea here was to train health care providers to take care of asthma in children, asthma being the number one chronic health condition among children. This lack of availability of these specialists that you were talking about, of course, prompted this, uh, I guess, educational program for general practitioners who may be on site. Is asthma treatment that difficult to administer, or is it the lack of professionals in that area? Well, thanks for that question. A lot of asthma is treated by primary care physicians, and particularly if it's relatively mild asthma, there are some common medications that physicians prescribe that can be very helpful. As asthma gets more severe and more complicated, and by complicated, I mean accompanied by other illnesses and other chronic health conditions, it becomes tricky. One of the elements of evidence-based guidelines that's present and important is the use of a spirometer. So a spirometer is a device that measures our lung function. A physician can listen to a child's lungs or chest with a stethoscope, but they're not going to know as much about how well the lungs function as we learn from a spirometry. So in the boot camp, uh, the boot camp program, we actually purchase and give spirometers to these rural primary care physicians and teach them to use them because the spirometer can guide the accurate treatment and monitoring of asthma. Now, I've heard that children sometimes grow out of asthma. Is that true or is that a myth? It's not a myth. Mm -hmm. It's true that some kids get better as they get older. Mm -hmm. Although asthma is a tricky disease, it doesn't actually typically go away completely. It sort of lingers out there. Mm -hmm. And so for kids who have asthma who get better and seem not to have asthma, Some of that asthma will come back later in adulthood. Some won't. Mm -hmm. But the good news is, yes, some kids get better over time. Why did you call it a boot camp? And is it geared toward maintenance of asthma or emergency situations or or both? Well, (laughs) boot camp, right, it's an eye catcher or an ear catcher, isn't it? Mm -hmm. The boot camp idea is that we're going to provide providers with really intensive training, but brief, because they're busy. So we're not going to ask them to come to Denver and listen to continuing medical education lectures for two or three days. In one intense day, we're going to equip them with the knowledge and the skills and the tool, spirometer, that allows you to take care of asthma. So the boot camp doesn't imply severity, but part of what we're doing is preparing them in what to do if children have sudden and severe asthma attacks, because that's where asthma can get very dangerous, and children do die every year from asthma. Now, aside from the intense training in a very short period of time, is that the only aspect of your program that differs from other training programs of the same nature? 
So a lot of programs, there have been a lot of programs that have tried to teach primary care physicians how to take care of asthma, and some very good. Mm -hmm. The more typical program invites providers to come and sit in an auditorium and hear CME lectures. The big difference in our program is we go out to the healthcare Mm -hmm. providers and we train them in their own local community. And we start by having an engagement meeting before we do any training. We go out and we find a location where we can invite everybody to meet. We talk about the program, we answer questions, and we listen to what the providers want because the providers may have specific requests that we need to listen to. All the training occurs then in some location near where they practice. It might be in a critical access hospital. We've uh, trained in a large conference room and an assisted care center, wherever there's space, we'll come and do the training. So how do you determine whether or not this boot camp training has been successful? Well, we do that in a number of ways. Of course, we survey the healthcare providers Mm -hmm. afterwards to determine, well, what was helpful and what wasn't. And then we sometimes tailor and, and make changes to the program according to what we're hearing. But in the last phase of training in Colorado, and we, we trained across rural Colorado over a period of 10 years, 500 healthcare providers, 176 practices. In the last training we did in Southwest Colorado, which was in La Plata County, we had an opportunity to look at actual healthcare outcomes. So in that field of asthma, the metric we use to measure whether a program really makes a difference is to address the question, did we reduce hospitalizations? Did we reduce emergency room visits? Did we reduce the use of their oral steroids? And we worked with a uh, Colorado, this is called the Colorado Medicaid Accountable Care Collaborative. So it's Medicaid data. Mm-hmm. And about half the kids treated in rural Colorado are on Medicaid. And we were able now to know, well, did we reduce these key markers of asthma control? And in fact, we found through their database that we were able to decrease emergency room visits by 10%. Mm -hmm. We decreased hospitalizations by 35%. And we decreased use of oral steroid by about 29% in the year following the training. Mm -hmm. And we actually were able to match those practices with other practices in the area that we did not train. And those untrained practices did not see a similar drop. So the drop occurred only among children in the practices that we trained. Is this program a Colorado-specific program? Do you have plans to roll it out across the country, or has that already begun? It has begun. The original funding came from the Colorado Department of Public Health and Environment. So, of course, it was a Colorado program. And that's where we did much of our training. We received other nonprofit grants. But as we got to the southwest corner of Colorado, we we sneaked across the border. We worked with the small Apache reservation in Delta, New Mexico. And we started to talk to healthcare providers on the Navajo Nation, which you may know is the largest tribal land in the United States, also the largest tribe, Mm -hmm. 27,000 square miles. Then in 2017, we received an $8.2 million grant from the National Institutes of Health to go to the Navajo Nation and to begin working with their healthcare providers using the same program, but also working through schools to educate people about asthma. This is a partnership between our center, National Jewish, Center, National Jewish Health, and the University of Arizona. Give us a website where we can learn more about uh, asthma and about the things that you're developing there at National Jewish Health. Yes, it's www.nationaljewish, all one, no spaces, one word, nationaljewish.org. Great. Well, Dr. Bender, I know 10 minutes is not a lot of uh, time to cover such a vast topic. I'm hoping that we'll have you back in studio in the future, and I really appreciate you joining us here on Health Professional Radio today. Thanks so much. You've been listening to Health Professional Radio. I'm your host, Neil Howard, in conversation with Dr. Bruce Bender. Audio copies of this program are available at hpr.fm and healthprofessionalradio.com.au. You can also subscribe to the podcast on iTunes, listen in, download it, SoundCloud, and be sure and subscribe to our YouTube channel at youtube.com. Health Professional Radio.